Hi guys, I'm Doug. Welcome to My Massey Garage. In today's video, we're going to be working on an anchor winch on a 16-foot Naden skiff. Here we can see, just have it kind of mocked up. We've gone to uh, a local machine shop, metal supply house, got a piece of, uh, yeah, I guess, it's eighth inch diamond plate. Cut it approximately, we just made a cardboard template and we cut it approximately to the uh, the size of the bow of the boat. It sticks out a little bit at the front, but not a big deal. Put a notch in here so we can keep the rope tied on. And I have the, uh, the winch just sitting on there, kind of showing you what it's gonna look like when we're done. Anyways, follow along and uh, hopefully get something from this video. Thanks a lot for watching. So the design of the Naden boat has a nice kind of flat bottom on the gunnel extrusion here. And uh, as long as we stay out fairly close to the, uh, to the edge, I think we'll be okay. We'll just be able to go right down through there and run a, uh, I think we'll go with a, a number 10, which is a 3 16 bolt uh, down through the plate and down through the extrusion, put a nylock nut on the bottom side. That should work. I've just, uh, quite honestly, the positioning of this hole was mostly just to miss the cleats on the diamond plate and likewise at the front, but still provide good edge distance. And then I measured and centered it. And lo and behold, we don't even hit one of the diamond pleat or diamond cleats there. So let me grab a uh, drill. I think we're going to start off with about an eighth inch drill bit and we'll drill through there and we'll see if we can get this to uh, line up. And this side over here appears to be lined up pretty well the same. And that looks like a good spot to me. We put these clamps on here just to hold things down in place, kind of sort of where it's supposed to be. I don't know why there would be a little bit of a twist in the uh, front of the boat, but that's how the plate fits on there. I've got an eighth inch drill bit in the drill and we will just run that down through nice and straight or as straight as possible. And then we'll drill it out to the three sixteenths. Number 10 by a two inch long bolt. And that fits down in there. Perfect. Now, because this is a, uh, flush style um, screw. I'm going to take a larger drill bit and open those holes up just a little bit so that the head of the screw fits down. Now the trick here is we don't want to drill all the way through. Just enough to take the head of the screw. And you'll notice there's a uh, protective plastic on the top of this. Now that we've got our holes marked on this side, we're gonna peel those, peel the plastic back. Ideally, we would use the proper countersink, but we don't have the proper countersink, so we will make do with that. We've got our uh, three bolts drilled for this side. Now I need to rinse and repeat on the other side. Now I'm gonna undo the clamps, take everything off of here, and uh, I'm going to deburr these holes so that we can uh, basically screw the piece of aluminum down at this point. And I will bring you back when I am ready to start mounting the winch. Anybody that's watched any of my other videos, you know how I do my deburring. You just take a larger drill bit, stick it in the hole, and spin it around by hand. It takes the sharp edge off of the back side. This I cut out on my uh, bandsaw and deburr it. So I'll just run the file over, take the sharp edges off. Put the winch on. We want to sneak the winch over as far this way as we can. We got a nice little uh, fair lead that feeds the uh, the anchor into the winch and the anchor comes up into this and when it hits it's spring loaded so that it uh, folds up and sits 
basically horizontal. Uh, given the type of anchor that we're using, I don't know, we might have to put some kind of something that the anchor can sit on. These types of uh, winches are commonly used with like a mushroom head or anchor and uh, we're using one uh, that's designed to dig into the bottom. Not really a Danforth anchor but kind of a chubby cast iron version of a Danforth. So I'm kind of thinking if we set it up so that we can drill through the uh, the gunnel with one of these bolts. The problem is with the three holes here we're not really clearing the gunnel on the back side if we drill so that we can go through the front lip of the, uh, the gunnel. So we might have to come back and drill all three holes just into the plate. Not necessarily my first choice, but uh, just given the angles we have to work with, I think that's going to be about the best we can do. Now there are holes on here that you can, uh, so you can bolt this piece to this. But I think that looks like pretty good spacing right about there. Let me grab a uh, Phillips screwdriver so I can take the cover off of the winch and we can uh, mark the holes and get it mounted. Got the cover off of the winch and there's a number of different mounting options in the bottom here. Um, ideally I'd like to use these two but this hole is below the relays so I think I'm going to use this slotted hole. Uh, I could use this slotted hole but again it overlaps the gunnel so I'm going to use this mounting hole here and up in the front I think we're just let me figure out what we're going to do here. I don't know. Whether, we won't use all three. We'll either use two or one. I think three bolts is probably lots to attach this down, but I've got the hardware. We may as well use four. Okay, so take the pen and we'll mark the holes we're going to use to uh, mount. So the way the, uh, the winch works here, you've got two relays that control your in and out, or a motor with a gear drive, and this goes to a control board that is mounted to the cover. These wires come back to the boat battery. This has a circuit breaker built into it. We also have a fuse panel at the back. Uh, when I get the wires run to the back, we'll decide whether we're going to connect this directly to the battery or use the... Uh, or use the fuse panel that I've got. And I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but there's a, we'll call it pretty well three quarter inch hole here in the base that is obviously where the wires are supposed to go down through. Uh, probably throw a tie wrap around there and then run it down through the plate. That we're gonna use is a grommet. Unfortunately, the half inch hole that I drilled, not quite big enough to take the holes. So we'll hit it with a step drill. There we are, that'll work well. Just so it's easier to work with, I pulled the, uh, the breaker off of the uh, positive lead. We shove it down through a little grommet we're gonna make. Hopefully there's enough room that the, uh, the negative lead will still be able to fit through there. Of course, it has a larger terminal because it's supposed to go right on the battery and there's no way that it is going to fit down through that hole, so I think we're going to have to cut it off. Here's our first stage. So we'll get this down through the, uh, the hole that I just drilled. around these wires so that they uh, are attached. 
attached to the frame of the winch. By attaching the wires to the frame of the winch, we're adding some strain relief so that if for some reason the uh, wires get pulled on, they won't be uh, tugging on the base of the uh, on the base of the circuit board here and breaking solder connections. That would be a bad thing. One thing I like to show here: you notice how there's not uh, much in the way of tie wrap sticking out of the end of these. Uh, that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, that way you don't have a sharp point of plastic sticking out there just looking to grab somebody's finger and shred them. Split loom. I'm sure everybody knows how split loom works. It's just basically a uh, PVC plastic uh, sleeving that goes over top of the wire and it's got a slot that you can use to put the wire into it. Uh, I am going to try and feed these down from the other end as much as I can at least and uh, we'll get this run down the gunnel. I think we're going to hang it underneath the seat braces and tuck it in nicely. I don't imagine it's showing up on the uh, camera right now. But the uh, right down here is a fuse panel that we can use to provide power to the uh, to the winch. Do it the hard way, or maybe this is the easy way. So unfortunately, we got a bit of a big battery box and a little battery in here. It doesn't fit real well, and I can't easily get the. Uh, battery out of there. But I do need to reduce some ground wires here. There's a uh, ground wire that comes off of the, uh, the Hummingbird Helix that uh, was an emergency repair <laughs> out on the lake while we were fishing. And now we've got the ground wire for the uh, electric winch that needs to get connected. So. What we're going to do, for the time being at least, is we're going to uh, join those both together in one connector. Unfortunately, my father's toolbox is a little sparse on connectors right now. And uh, I was only able to find one that would fit over the post of the, uh, the battery. So it is not ideal and we will get it fixed before we'll call this installation absolutely complete. But for the short term, we'll make it work. Twist these two wires together and put them in the same terminal. Here's our ground for now. And as I said, we'll get it fixed, put a better connector on there. Looking at this whole uh, setup that we've got going on here, I think I need to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, actually, what would be nice is a uh, proper ground terminal mounted or grounding lug mounted here somewhere 
so that all that's connected to the uh, to the battery itself is uh, the main feed. Everything else gets run through a, a grounding block. But unfortunately, we don't have those parts here right now, so we'll make do with what we've got. In theory, this uh, little setup should be hooked up a little work. Definitely uh, looks promising. Man, that thing does not waste any time going down. Well, that's definitely progress. Well guys, I think we're gonna end this one here. Uh, basically, I've got the uh, the winch functional using the up and down buttons on the top of the unit. Check back in a couple of weeks. We've got a wireless remote that we want to hook up to this, but uh, it didn't go quite as smoothly as uh, the packaging suggested it would. And uh, it's kind of a video of its own. Anyways, really appreciate you watching this one. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing. And uh, we'll see you in the next mess. Thanks for watching.